viewers, and welcome to an informed discussion, another program here at the Government Information Service. I'm your host today, Abigail McIntyre, and with me in studio is Mr. Gerard Tamar. Now, I'm sure you would have heard this name. He's definitely a household name. Um, delivering uh, weather forecasts uh, to a number of persons throughout Grenada, Karakou, and Petit Martini on a number of media stations. And um, today we're going to see the face behind the name <laughs> and the voice. So good morning, <laughs> Mr. Tamar, and thank you for joining us here. Oh, good morning. It's a pleasure being here. Mm -hmm. It's always a pleasure having you, of course. Uh, so viewers, we just want to let you know that uh, today is World, um, World Med Day. World Med Day, right? And uh, the meteorological department down at the Morris Bishop International Airport, they have a number of activities planned out this week and today as well. And we get the opportunity to speak to Mr. Tamar and find out a bit about the work that they do down there because sometimes we just think of them when um, there is a need. But we, um, I'm sure there's a lot more behind oh, yes. what the Met Office do and today we're going to learn a lot more about that. So good morning again, Mr. Tamar. Yes, and um, we're just going to start the interview off by you just um, explaining to me, giving me a bit of an idea, paint the picture for me as to what the meteorological office is all about. What is it that you do? Okay, well, the meteorological office basically is an organization that looks after the atmosphere mm -hmm. over a particular jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, in in Grenada, our office we are charged with um, looking at the atmosphere over the tri island state of Grenada, Kaku, and Peyton Martinique, right. primarily. Okay. Um, we have two basic functions. Firstly, we serve the aviation industry okay. because um, having a Met Office at a particular standard mm -hmm. is one of the prerequisites for being able to operate an international airport. Okay. So right. your services must reach a particular standard. You must be able to, to deliver certain products. Of course. Okay. So we have that. And then we have the public part where we uh, where we serve the public, where we give like the public forecasts, and mm -hmm. then we do things like advisory for um, for any um, adverse weather um, conditions, and we also have a data collection center, okay, okay. Uh, which is our climatolo climatological department, mm -hmm. which works on the data collecting data. You know, we collect data every hour. Mm -hmm. So then we use this data to analyze and develop products for our trial and state and, and we share with all other stakeholders regionally, internationally. Okay. So in a nutshell, that's what we do. We operate 24 hours a day. We are part oh, of yeah. the essential <laughs> services. Your offices okay. are never closed. Yeah, never <laughs> closed. Night, lights never goes off. It's, all, it's always staff. Right. Um, that's just what it is. Okay? Yes, yes. Because the weather never sleeps. Well, precisely. Okay? The, weather, the weather never sleeps. Okay. <laughs> And there's a great myth that, oh, well, it's dry season, you don't do anything. Of course, Ooh. dry season is weather. That's right. It's weather. It and, is. and unfortunately, we have this grave m misconception that nothing happens in dry season, mm -hmm. but the dry season is a very, very important part of our climatology. Okay. So we are part of essential services, like all during the, um, the pandemic when mm -hmm. um, other departments were closed and other um, industries were locked down. We were going to work as usual, have to yes. get police pass, oh, yes. everything to go to work, and, and we kept things going all the time. If Even though we were under a significant threat, like a storm watch, a hurricane watch, whatever, mm -hmm. we have to be out there, we sleep in if have to, but mm -hmm. we keep the operations going. Definitely. Mm -hmm. You mentioned a while ago some of your products and services. you want to elaborate more on that for me? Okay. Um, med offices generally are... are, are Grenada's, Grenada's Met Office is no different from me, any other Met Office mm -hmm. um, throughout the world, except for maybe the different products we offer because, of course, resources as a total country. Okay. Um, we all do basically the same thing. Okay. Firstly, we observe the weather. In other words, we take a note of what is happening and, and we look at the temperature, the rainfall, the wind, the humidity, the pressure. Okay. Mm -hmm. All Met Offices does that. It doesn't matter if you're in the middle of the Sahara or you're in Antarctica, that is what is the word because you are observing the elements around you. Mm -hmm. okay? So we do that. And that is logged and, and tabulated and so forth. Okay? Uh, so that is observation. So you can see the trend over time. Then we do forecasting where we use the current conditions 
and together with other products that we have developed and other products that other um, stakeholders have developed, we are able to predict what is going to happen. And we do it um, in at our office, we do three forecasts a day. We, in the morning, we do one for the day and the night. In the midday, we do one for the afternoon and looking at the night again. And then in the evening, we do one for for the night and the following three days. Right. Okay? So we always abreast of what is happening and what is going to happen in that three day span. Okay? So after we do all that, um, we have all this data, then we offer a climatological service. Mm -hmm where you look at all the data collected over the years because we collect data every hour for every day. Okay? That's a lot of data. So that's a <laughs> lot of data. Okay? But these data are so important. And as we get into all these things with climate change and all that, mm -hmm. these data are becoming like gold and all. Okay? Yeah. So you can look back over the last 10 years, the last 20 years, see trends. Mm -hmm. and, uh, <coughs> excuse me. And also know what is being done that a lot a lot of these data are being now analyzed to make predictions mm. for for the future right because everything is in a cycle and we can see the change we can see how things changing so we can see um okay if we have a dry year this year um, what's the possibility of next year being a dry year or how dry was it compared to you know periods Previous before years, yeah. so a lot of analysis goes on i mean there are people who especially trained for that. There are people who spend their life just doing all of these analysis and not only Greenland but all over the world. And yeah. based on the, your staffing, you know, you normally, med office normally have a department mm -hmm. especially doing that. Um, okay. It's also important too because um, various other industries want particular data too. For mm -hmm. instance, one of the major supermarkets and they wanted temperature and humidity for mm. overextended period of time. Uh, the reason for that is that they wanted to bring in a new brand of chocolates. Right. So they have to check out the shelf life, you know, right. what Look are the conditions. Mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. Simple like that, but very, very, <laughs> very, very important. Yes. Insurance companies, when there is a claim for damage, you know, for property and so forth, you know, they come and they are, what was the rainfall like, what was the condition like, mm -hmm. you know. In accidents, you know. Yeah. Oh yes, definitely. So a lot, a lot of various industries <laughs> yeah. come to us. I mean, almost every month we have requests for this, requests for this, requests for this, and those are just the small ones. You know, the people who doing research and so forth want twenty and forty years data yeah. or so. Yeah, like, yeah. So you have to be going back, <laughs> you know. So 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 all offices have these archives, and we have them stored in a particular order. They are particular um, software. They, that has mm -hmm. been developed, you know, to uh, manipulate all this data. There are certain products that could be the um, that could be developed and have been developed with you know industry standards. Okay, mm -hmm. so so depending on what you want, by two clicks of a button, we can able to exactly <laughs> to give it so to it's you. like you have your own little statistical department yes, within yes, the yes. med office. Within <laughs> the med office, yeah. Okay. And remember that that little department. That volume of data is growing every hour. Precisely. <laughs> every hour. Every yes, hour, yeah. on the hour. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we are finding ourselves now um, um, having to extend more and more resources into that department yes. because, of course, you know, storage and all that exactly. become a, a problem. No, not only that, um, in Grenada, we are quite fortunate to now have uh, 30 years of compact data. Now, now in climatology, 30 years is your average. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, <laughs> not much could be done with data under 30 years because, you know, the span is just exactly not long enough. So we've been operating at that level since 1985, so we now have that, and we, and we are quite proud of that achievement. There are other islands in the Caribbean that cannot boast up with that, but wow. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but no, we no, can. You know, but yeah, but we can, and 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 not only. Can we boast about the volume? The other important thing about data is has to be clean, okay? Yes. Because bad data is no is no data. No data so yes. a lot of time and resources are also go into the preservation of this data and making sure that it is accurate to the point so it can be used in anything that any stakeholder wants. And mit, and speaking of stakeholders, I know that the Med Office does not operate in isolation. No. Talk to us about some of your collaborations with local agencies. Okay, well, 
<laughs> we collaborate with almost every agency and almost every industry in Grenada. Mm -hmm. Okay, but um, maybe our 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 best friend mm -hmm. is Nagma. Of course. Of, of course. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> of course, Nagma, Nawasa, mm -hmm. and the Ministry of Agriculture. Okay. That's that's our three yeah. three colleagues, because we do a lot of the same thing. Okay, like Ministry of Agriculture, Land Use Division, and they have a lot of reengages and they monitor rainfall and they advise the farmers yes. and so forth, okay? Yes. Um, we do a lot of that data collection also, and we share information. I mean, mm -hmm. like right now, we are working with them together with CIMH, the Caribbean Institute for Meteorological, Meteorology and Hydrology, in developing a warning system for drought for the agriculture sector, using the data that we have in Grenada, yeah. okay? And that is a pilot pro project which has been successful thus far, and next month is going to be rolled out to the rest of the Caribbean. Wow. Okay. Okay. I did just not know this. <laughs> just, just using your data, because a lot, of, nice. a lot of research went into it, um, using the folks of the, um, the National Jout, um, what's the word? National Jout Litigation Center in mm -hmm. the USA, mm -hmm. okay, from the, um, the ABC at the University of um, Nebraska, okay? And they are the official body for jolt monitoring in the USA. So we okay. had a lot of their personnel working along with us and the St. Lucia Met Office as a mm -hmm. pilot project. Okay? And it has been successful just far. I mean, we've been able to, I mean, we came in for some high praise if you must blow a trumpet. Yes. Uh, so we've been able to develop um, a product mm -hmm. which would be used to alert the farming sector, the agriculture sector, on drought. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, in the four coming years. Um, then we have, um, oh, let me just say, um, with NAGMA, for instance, um, well, we once we talk NAGMA, we're talking yes. about um, <laughs> people of our opinion, we're talking um, severe weather, you know, yes. which of course <laughs> is, is quite natural. Um, um, our staff and the NAGMA staff are close together, we communicate almost daily, especially in the hurricane season, mm -hmm. okay, okay, because we give out all of our, all of our warnings, advisories, even if nothing is happening, we still do the updates and so forth. Yeah. Okay. So when it comes to n disaster preparedness, um, we are generally the, 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 the early warners, okay, because we will have the information up, on f up front, okay, and we do the early warning and the all clear at the end, mm -hmm. okay. And then they do all the bits and pieces yes. in, uh, in and between. Okay, um, one important, uh, one interesting thing about the med services is that all med services interact. Okay, whatever information you have, you share. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that is just how we operate. Yeah. Because, for instance, if I have a particular condition in, in Grenada, there's no sense me keeping it to myself. Mm -hmm. Okay, we share. When we collect data, when we do our observation, or we collect data every hour, that is transmitted globally. Okay. okay. So I can sit in my office okay. and find out what the weather is like in Beijing yeah. and Antarctica. As long as I can find the station, as long as I know the name of the station, I can mm -hmm. find what the recent condition is. I can mm -hmm. know what the forecast is. Mm -hmm. okay. So when you put all of these conditions let's say for 10 o'clock this morning, when you put all of these conditions on a chart, you can have a picture of what's happening worldwide yeah. or regional-wide based on how you want it. Okay. Okay. So communication within the, um, the various met, um, met offices regionally, globally, is a very tight. We have a very tight-knit community. Mm -hmm. Our community, uh, we show information, let's say, globally. Um, then also, we have a very good relationship with a lot of schools. Okay, explain that to me. <laughs> now, uh, schools, now the, the airport is always an interesting place for children. True. Okay. <laughs> and, and when they get into the, uh, the upper second, the, the upper primary school and they start doing more about weather, okay, they want to come to see it at work. Right. So, okay. so we have schools coming in I mean, regularly, yeah, yeah. and especially when they come until like the end of the term and so mm -hmm. Of course, and that goes for the secondary school too, because they go much more in depth, and TAMCC. 
Okay. So um, it's almost like a it's almost like clockwork. They come, they come, <laughs> they call, they wanna come, they call, they wanna come. Um, one or two schools also for for career day, um, they have um, students come in and spend a day with us just to see what's going on. Okay. That's the nice. other important <laughs> part, as I mentioned, is for the aviation industry. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Now, without medic, there would be no a aviation. And actually, and the field of meteorology has grown in the region primarily because of the growth of the aviation sector. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, you find um, the airlines mm -hmm. are always in contact. They want to know what's happening. Mm -hmm. Because, tell you, if an airline, a new airline, wants to mm -hmm. operate out of Grenada, mm -hmm. or into Grenada, mm -hmm. one of the first things to do, they come to see what service you offer. Of course. Yeah. yeah? Yes. They come to see what service you offer. And some of them are coming, I've had the, the privilege or, the, or, 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 or being in a hush it or being being grilled by some of these executives, you know, you know, oh you yeah, know what because it's it. serious business. Because it's, it is serious <laughs> business. Um, if we miss one of our hourly uh, reports, you know, like for instance, like if American Airlines is scheduled to come in this afternoon at two o'clock and JetBlue, uh, and ten o'clock by half past ten, they didn't see anything from Grenada. Mm. Start calling. Yes, exactly. What's happening? What's, What's happening? On, What's yeah. happening? Yeah. And of course, when there is um, adverse weather conditions, mm -hmm. they see guidance, you mm -hmm. know, they want to know what's happening. Yes. The crew actually comes in and sit with you and you show them what's happening here, what's happening here, what's happening here. And sometimes this information can inform whether a flight is cancelled or... Oh, definitely, or definitely, so, yeah. definitely, definitely. For, for safety, for passenger comfort, for operating yes. costs, for all of these things, these are... Had, they take that very seriously because that's their bread and butter because, exactly. you know, they all the legal complications and, mm -hmm. and all that. Yeah? So, so they come sometimes, they sit with you and they, and they, you show them all what's available and then they make the decision. Okay? Yeah. Um, another thing that happens in Grenada, uh, many people don't know about it, um, we have a lot of what we call ferry pilots. Explain that. Ferry pilots. <laughs> now, um, in South America, where they have a lot of those like large those large land spaces with a lot, a lot of the cattle industry and so forth. Okay. We find a lot of people down there like purchasing aircraft, smaller aircrafts. Mm -hmm. okay. well, and they, they, most of them, they put them in the US. Mm. And so they hire these ferry pilots to bring them, to fly them down. So people may leave the US, Midwest or whatever, and fly, come down to fly to the Bahamas, then Jamaica, or and they hop the islands, come come all the way down, you know. And most times, Grenada is the last stop before they hit the um, the American mainland. Okay? Mm -hmm. and, and especially that, and they do that a lot at this time of the year, where it's a little bit more favorable f for them to fly. Okay. okay. They don't want to go into the west season <laughs> when, when they're across the ITCZ and all of that. Mm. Okay. And these people, well, we actually know them by name and by face <laughs> now because they've been doing it so, for yeah, such a long yeah, time. Yeah, for such a long time. <laughs> Can they come and they sit down with you and they try to plot the course of where to pass, where to go, what's the weather's like here, what's the weather's like there, what, what's the winds like at this level, what's the winds like at that level. I mean, and, and those guys flying some small aircrafts, I mean, <laughs> sometimes you're your car is even bigger than, <laughs> than that. So they yes. have to be, you know, extremely careful. Exactly. They yeah. could be tossed about up there. They could be tossed about there, uh, you know. And then they have to look at their, 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 their fuel economy because, you know, the mess. Right. Because um, to, to the south of Venezuela, there's a mountain range there. And, be, and most time because of the, um, the, the type of aircraft they have, they might have the power to go over, so we have mm. to go around. That's right. the extra fuel. So, so... So that's a service we we provide also, you know, to these fer ferry pilots. For some reason, they don't like to go to Trinidad, so they come in Grenada. If they reach in Grenada in the afternoon, they'll sleep and leave at first light, mm. uh, fly for the whole day. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Do you have any collaborations with Coast Guard? Oh, yes. Um, yes, because um, normally if you have like a vessel 
had drift and so forth, okay? Mm -hmm. um, the Coast Guard were called for on the marine information and especially for the wind because, you know, the wind will yes. affect the drift and so forth. Yeah. So, again, that's part of the essential okay. services. <laughs> yes, yes. I had yes. to ask. Mm -hmm. And in terms of, because you mentioned briefly a while ago, you know, some of your collaborations with international mm -hmm. agencies. Mm -hmm. And I know, like you just said, the Met Office, um, you would share information with mm -hmm. your mm -hmm. other Met partners throughout mm -hmm. the region mm -hmm. and so on. So everybody is on the same page. Mm -hmm. You want to speak to us a bit more about some of those international and um, regional collaborations that you share? Oh, okay. Well, um, Grenada is also a member of CMO, Caribbean Meteorological Organization. Okay. Which is the, re the regional um, umbrella body, okay? And that is a very vibrant organization. Um, uh, we've been a member for, I, I think maybe since its incep <laughs> inception, okay? Mm -hmm. um, we have we have good working relationship with them because um, a, lot, a lot of projects also come through from donor agencies come through that organization yeah. okay. um, whose headquarters is now is in, is in Trinidad, headed by um, Dr. Lang, who, who is Jamaican actually. So that's one, so that's one agency. Um, we have close ties with the Caribbean Meteorological Institute. Okay? Mm -hmm. That's where all our staff train, okay? all our staff train, and they, they, they they do not only train our staff, but the development of uh, projects and research and so So right now we have about three ongoing projects with them, mm -hmm. okay, where we where we um we trying to develop different um different things, uh, or different projects. So one is trying to get a document on climate roadmap for you know for use in Grenada which we hope to get um, attached to the Grenada adoption plan all of right. all of those things so they have the expertise and all of that okay um, we what I just mentioned about the the job management program yes, and all exactly. of that huh? okay um, they use our data to produce some regional um, publications monthly you know like like um the precipitation outlook, what you okay. think will be for the next month or for the next three months, the temperature outlook, all of those things. Yeah. They, they are the regional, um, the regional um, cohorts, so mm -hmm. everybody give them the information and they, and they serve the entire region. Then um, we have WMO, the World Met Organization. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do, though we don't um, um, interface with them that directly, okay, but through CIMH and through the Caribbean Met Organization, of course. Uh, we get all the benefits um, yeah. and interaction with them. Um, when needs be, um, we um, we work with the Hurricane Center Miami mm -hmm. for obvious reasons, you know, for mm -hmm. women, okay, and 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 any other agency that that come up from time to time that needs services that need um. Maybe a different perspective or something, because well, what we find happening is that uh, as the world has changed, different organizations are involved in many different things, and and it's no longer one size fits all. Everybody's <laughs> collaborating yeah. with somebody for something. Sometimes just our part is just a small part in in, in a bigger project. Mm -hmm. you know? um, we had a very successful um, run, uh, but yes. Sometime last year, when um, SGU was doing a, a, a was part of a, um, a, a regional um, research on health and climate, mm. you know, okay, interesting. you know, yeah. So, so, so they were getting all the details from the hospital, with, you know, what mm. people come down with and so forth, and, and running the analysis with what was happening weather wise, you know, and and and. and he came up for some interesting findings. Yes, yes, that would have been good to hear. <laughs> some of those findings, that would have been good. Um, so we're celebrating um, World Met Day today. Mm -hmm. It is the 23rd day mm -hmm. of March mm -hmm. uh, 2022. Um, what makes a day like this important and why should it even be observed? Okay, well, um, first of all, it's a time when the Met services around the world kind of Stop and give themselves a, a pat on the back. Um, yeah. We are Deservingly many times. So. <laughs> we are many times the unsung heroes. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, people now have sort of expect to hear 
what the weather would be, you know. And they expect you to be accurate. Yes. Yeah? Mm -hmm. okay? <laughs> a lot of decisions are made on what the weather would be, okay? And, and, and I'm using the word weather loosely here, both um, climate and, and current weather, okay? Mm -hmm. and, and, and people just expect you to be able to deliver. And when it doesn't turn out as they expect it, then, then you get a royal bass. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> a royal bass. <laughs> Okay, okay. So this is a time when we take time out to pat ourselves on the back. Um, it is a time also for some introspect. You know that, that when you look at where you are, what have you developed, how are you going, you know? Um, it's a time also for the solidarity, you know, with your fellow workers in different, in different islands, okay? And, uh, um, and for us in Grenada, um, we are taking the time also to... to, to, to to breathe a little, you know, to tell ourselves, okay, um, we are getting there. Yeah. Because um, our staff, as I said, for the last two years, we have been going, you know, mm -hmm. we, we, we have been going, <laughs> and, and, and we hadn't had the time, the privilege, or, or to have a break <laughs> like exactly. like most people, exactly. you know, you know. So 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 we are taking this time, you know, just to give ourselves a pat on the back, also, you know. You know, um, also uh, I must mention too that 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 we um we have teamed up with some of our regional uh, regional colleagues. You know, and uh, in this information sharing thing, so we have um, spoken to each other. We have sent um, like videos, you know, to each other, <laughs> sharing each other on happy mm -hmm. world May day, happy world May day. You know. And on the international scene too, I mean, the WMO is, has put aside this day to, 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 to highlight the work of, of itself as a world organization, as part of the United Nations, okay, um, to, to look at the progress of the, um, of the organization and also the progress of the science of meteorology. Mm -hmm. Because meteorology is probably the science that is least known to man simply because we look we deal with the atmosphere from the upper limits of the atmosphere to the surface of the earth and you cannot take that and put it in a lab and run an experiment mm -hmm. on it that's <laughs> right you know that's right. you, know? <laughs> you <laughs> can do that with almost every other thing but you just cannot put it so 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 you have to basically learn as you go along mm -hmm. okay and, and and there have been people from various countries all over the world who have dedicated their life to 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 to, to improving the sciences you know Many products have been developed. I mean, we almost every six months or so, we are getting a new product which will look at a particular element, mm. you know, in the atmosphere. And we use that in our in our operations. There are many of them on trial right now, you know, you know. So the field is constantly changing because new and new things are developing. People are doing more and more research, and more and more things are coming. To the four, Ma man, many discoveries are being made. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, because look at it. I mean, just a few years ago, just around the Second World War, as they send the fighters up, they realize, oh, but there's a, there's a Gulf Stream. There's this jet of air that moves across the Atlantic. Oh, we never knew that was there before, mm. but it's been there. It's Mother Nature who put it there, right? <laughs> so then people are now learning to ride that to, to see if you will. And all, and all of that. So, well, so we're constantly like evolving, <laughs> and we're getting to know what Mother Nature is yes. doing. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, <laughs> Mr. Timar, you have been a forecaster for how long? Uh, twelve years. For twelve years. Um, before we wrap up this interview, really, mm. yeah, you know, I just have to mm. ask, mm. what has the experience been like for you? Is this a fulfilling field? Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yes. Oh yes. Oh, yes. You know, it, 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 it's. I tell you this. F from one side, to be a little adventurous, you have to say. Okay, I think I could understand Mother Nature, you know. I <laughs> think I know what she's doing. She did this before, she did that before. So mm -hmm. if this condition is here and this is here and this is changing here and this is changing, then I'm sure she's going to go there. Right. You know? <laughs> so, so, so most times we get it right. Most times we get it right. <laughs> but, also, but also, but also, there is another side of it. Um, when it comes to the stakeholders, the public, okay, there is, the world has changed so much that there is a need, a lot of decisions are made on weather, mm -hmm. and not only weather, weather and climate information. Okay? And in Grenada, we are getting more and more sophisticated. 
Okay, so people are coming to you now for a lot of more uh, sophisticated and intrinsic um, information. Mm -hmm. So you, you have to be on your ball. Of course, you have to be on the ball. Yeah. I mean. It is not out there the public, but there are industries that really depend on it. Mm -hmm. okay? And bad information, low information, mm -hmm. you're looking at a lot of money and expense and a lot of inconveniences mm -hmm. and, and lots of business and all that. So so as time evolves, you know, we are getting more and more sophisticated customers mm -hmm. and we have to be able to, to meet them. So we have to be mm -hmm. constantly raising a game and keeping abreast with all the changes and developing new products. And that is one of the most rewarding parts so that when people come they ask you i don't know if you want to help us now but we're looking for xyz i don't think you're hurt us eh? of course we, we can give you that you know yeah. like, oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know so, so, <laughs> so it's rewarding and that thing and then um i'm um, also the day the our our biggest our biggest clients mm -hmm. and i think our biggest fans is the aviation industry yeah okay um, the airlines have written many a time, the US airlines have been expressing their, 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 their gratitude and mm -hmm. so for the level of service we have provided mm -hmm. for them over the years. Okay? And that we think is one of our biggest, the, one of the biggest feathers in our cap. Mm -hmm. We have been able to satisfy the aviation industry to the max and we we take that quite proud. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Okay. Tema, definitely mm -hmm. it was a pleasure speaking with you uh, today and I want to wish you and your team a very happy World mm -hmm. Med Day and mm -hmm. on behalf of so many Grenadians, we say thank mm -hmm. you for the work that you all do. You do not go mm -hmm. unnoticed because we know whenever we really <laughs> do need you, you all are there mm -hmm. to answer mm -hmm. the call definitely. And it's really great to have this discussion because it really opens our minds and um, helps us to appreciate more the work mm -hmm. that you and your team do down at the Med Office. So thank you and hats off to you. And I truly believe that after the police, the Met Office is definitely <laughs> um, those that serve and protect us. <laughs> so thank you so very much. Well, Mr. my pleasure. <laughs> my pleasure being here. Definitely. Yeah. Viewers, we were speaking to Mr. Gerard Tamar, and he is a forecaster at the Meteorological Office that's done at the Mars Bishop International Airport. And of course, we were talking around uh, World Met Day, but definitely we spent most of our time here really understanding the work that the Met Office do. Because a a lot of the times their work really go unnoticed and we just think that they exist when we need them in case of a disaster or we find it's raining too much or outside looks a bit too hazy so what's going on you know and that kind of thing but we really understood here um during our time spent with mr tema that it's a lot more than just what we see um at the forefront so we thank them so very much for all that they do and we wish them the very best um certainly so i want to thank you all for joining us in this another informed discussion here at the government information service. I was your host Abigail McIntyre. Thank you for being here with us.